I have never taken a Wii U apart before, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Having just recently done a Wii, I want to see what changes they've made. These little stickers kind of fly off half of the time. No problem. Just carefully using my dental pick here to get in there. I don't want to scratch this plastic, but it does help me get underneath there. We're going to need to change these bits a few different times in order to get this shell apart. Just need to slide that over and then we can unclip this side part of the case. Revealing a few more screws. Now I'm just supposed to lift up on this, but this rubber foot on the bottom is kind of sticking. I'll just set that back there so we don't forget about it and do that on the other side as well. This just pulls off. I'm gonna carefully use my spudger to release this. I don't wanna puncture a hole in any of this grate here, but I'm gonna help release it. I also don't want to break the little white clips that are holding it on. A few more screws and we can remove this shield. Kind of disappointed that it is a lot cleaner on the inside than on the outside. I was hoping that based upon the outside this would be nice and dirty inside, but it looks pretty good on the inside. I think it's still worth going ahead and doing a disassembly and a deep clean on this just for the experience. I have, again, never seen the inside of a Wii U, so we're going to continue with this project. But it definitely is a lot more clean on the inside than most things that I give this treatment. This door just kind of slides and then comes out from the inside. Let's continue and get the disk drive taken out of here. Four more screws and then we do want to be careful lifting this because there is a ribbon cable attached here at the bottom. We'll just release the gate on the disk drive side here and we have that free. Let's go ahead and break this disk drive down a little bit further. We'll see what we're dealing with here. Oh look, more screws. I'm going to go ahead and take this part out and just try to get the disk drive completely removed from all of the metal casing. There we go. That will allow me to at least see if there's anything that needs cleaned. It looks pretty good. I'll still probably use my electric air duster to get any dust out of there that might have settled, but it does look pretty good. Just want to take a look here at all of these antennas. There's four different antennas that I want to make sure to be able to remember where they go and how the wires run. Little plastic clips that are kind of holding them in place that I'm pushing down with my thumb so that I can pull these out of the way. And I'm going to leave this white tape on here to hopefully reuse in putting these wires back where they belong. And once again, little plastic clips that release the antennas and then just follow the wires where they are tucked, where they are clipped. Get all of it released here. And then just kind of set aside out of the way while we get the rest of this stuff taken apart. Two screws here on each side of this black plastic molding. It feels like it's stuck a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and remove the fan, even though I don't think I have to in order to take that black plastic piece out. But let's just get this out of the way. 
yeah, it just kind of slides and pops out of some uh, little latches that are holding it in place there. So there we go. And similar with this thing right here that's housing over top of the heatsink, it clips underneath in those three spots there and then just kind of slides forward to lock in place. Let's get all of these screws taken off of here to remove this piece of metal. There are four little brackets here that are for holding up the disk drive. Just want to set them down there so I can look back at this footage and remember how to put them back on. So I took these four screws out hoping I could pop this off, but it feels pretty stuck and I don't want to just force it off, especially since I don't see really any need to cleaning wise. So I'm going to leave that on there. Let's work these antenna wires free here and then we can get these three big plastic brackets off of the side here of the motherboard. There's a couple of anchor points for screws here on the bottom side of this, so we're going to remove those as well as this bracket that's underneath the heatsink and the main CPU or GPU. Not entirely sure, but I'm sure somebody will let me know. There we have everything taken apart as far as I think I'm going to go. So let's get our Dawn dish detergent out. I have been asked a few times recently if there is anything special about the Dawn dish detergent versus other things like Simple Green or just any other kind of soap. If you go back to my earliest videos, I actually was using an unscented laundry soap because that's just what I had on hand. Something that I bought at some point to clean the, uh, the earmuffs on headphones. Uh, then at one point I started using the Dawn dish detergent because it said right on the bottle that it has 50% less scrubbing and I was like, hey, I don't want to scrub twice as much. So I started using it and it seems to work well, but I don't believe that you have to use it. Anything that's safe on plastics, whatever works, whatever helps. I wish there was more gunk on this board for the satisfaction of cleaning, but there's only a few little spots. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaning tool that I have here inside of these USB ports and other places. I have my fan here and I learned something recently, which is that if you just run this air in here on this fan without holding the blade still, it will make the blade spin, which is really cool to look at, but it could wear out the fan theoretically, or I've even heard some people say that it could build up electricity inside of there, which I don't know. I don't know enough about that to know whether or not that's true or not, but I don't like the idea of wearing out the fan unnecessarily, so I'm going to hold it still while I blow it out from now on. Just going to get some air inside of this disk drive. Doesn't really look like I'm affecting it that much, but this is what I would do to clean dust out of here. And the lens looks good as well. I'm not going to chance scratching it or smudging it by cleaning it, so. I'm just going to get the inside of this drive here with a little bit of IPA on my cotton swab on the intake of this drive. And let's move on to our parts that have been soaking here in this warm soapy water. I like using a paintbrush for this. It was a recommendation at one point by a commenter. And yeah. 
I like it a lot. Now the gunk on the outside of here is pretty caked on. I am able to get quite a bit of it with this brush, but I can tell that there is going to be some clean that I'm going to need to get after I scrub and rinse and dry these pieces using my IPA and probably a cotton swab to get a few of the stains and tougher areas taken care of. But I'm gonna give all these pieces a good scrub. Switch over to my toothbrush for the smaller parts. Some of these pieces are so small, especially these little clear light indicators that go underneath the power and reset buttons on the faceplate. They're so tiny and just kind of get lost in this water. And so I want to issue you a fair warning. I actually made a huge mistake when doing this. I believe I lost one of these little plastic pieces down the drain when I was rinsing them which I should have put them inside of something to make sure that I could rinse them without the chance of losing it, but I was just holding it and I believe I lost it. At least I couldn't find it when I was all done. So we have a piece missing. Fortunately for me, I work here with Tronix Fix and because Steve has been doing both a repair business and then eventually a YouTube channel for a number of years, we have a good number of parts that have just kind of built up around here. And we were able to find another broken Wii U that I had to disassemble in order to get a replacement little light indicator plastic piece. But warning to you, because most people, if you're just doing this on your Wii U at home or want to take it apart and clean it, it's not going to be so easy for you to get a replacement part. So learn from my mistakes and please be careful when rinsing off your pieces over a drain. That looks a lot better. I did not soak this face plate in my soapy water because I didn't want to get the material that's around the disc intake wet. And looks pretty good. I think we're good with that. As I have started doing, we have a shot here showing all of the pieces cleaned, set out on my workspace, what we just went through, and we are going to prepare to put it all back together now.
Is there anything that I want to say about the Wii U? This was the successor to the Wii, which was, I believe up until the Switch, Nintendo's highest selling console, if it's not still. And Nintendo expected this to do really well like the Wii did, but for a number of reasons, poor marketing, poor name choice, um, the confusion that people had over wondering if this was an accessory for the Wii or if this was a new console in and of itself, uh, as well as making it difficult for third party software developers to make games for it, the Nintendo Wii U kind of bombed which was unfortunate. I think it was a pretty good console and it had an incredible library of games, which fortunately, with uh, the Nintendo bringing the Nintendo Switch out in 2017, uh, they started porting games over from the Wii U to the Switch because they had so many more people that owned Switches. So a lot of those games, which were really good games, uh, they could bring over to the Switch. In fact, the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch both share the highest selling game for their consoles respectively, which is Mario Kart 8. Originally developed for the Wii U, Mario Kart 8 was really, really good. And it is the highest selling Wii U games with over 8 million copies sold, I believe. That same game was then put on the Nintendo Switch as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And that is also the highest selling Switch game. But instead of selling 8 million copies, it has sold over 60 million copies. If that tells you anything about how much more successful the Switch was at getting consoles in people's homes. Still, there are some things about the Wii U that are actually, I believe, superior to the Nintendo Switch, even though the Switch overall is a way better console. The biggest thing is being able to have that pad in your hands that has its own screen on it and be able to play on the TV at the same time, which for a few games was brilliant. I think uh, there's a couple of Zelda games that they made HD remakes for, like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, and having your menu and items right there on touchscreen to easily access without having to go into a pause menu was brilliant. The game that easily, I believe, was most benefited by the Wii U's hardware and by the Wii U's interface was Mario Maker. Mario Maker was redone again as a different game for the Nintendo Switch. I got that copy after having put lots of time into it on my Wii U, and I just could never get into it because the benefit of having that second screen to select your things and items on while building courses was just tremendous. And the Switch couldn't do that. So there are some things the Wii U was really, really good at. It was a good concept, good system, but just never really took off like the Wii or the Switch. You know, I was seeing a lot of scratches there, so we're gonna do something that I don't usually do on the videos. I'm gonna try a little bit of polish. This is called New Finish Scratch Doctor. I'm going to just give this a good application here and then use a dry cloth to wipe it off. We'll speed up this process for you. And then we'll give it a good buffing for its shine. All right, it's the most nerve wracking part. It worked when I started. Does it still work? 
the first time I've tried it. So this is loading up, but I hope something appears there. And it does. So far, so good. We'll let it finish loading up. I'll try a disc. It accepted a disc. I am getting my game icon on the gamepad. It needs to run an update. And then hopefully I can spend at least a little bit of time playing Mario Maker the way it is best played on the Wii U. Well, everything looks like it's working perfectly. I enjoyed taking apart a Wii U for the first time. I hope it was beneficial or at least fun for you as well. Now I'm gonna finish this masterpiece of a level. See ya.